Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a live episode of Flaming Freedom. We are live via LRN and via Ustream. So those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast next week, join us live. And that provides the opportunity for you to call in and share your thoughts with us via the Skype account in your head shows. Just log into Skype and then Skype to in your head shows and you can join us. This is your host, Dale. And And Lauren. And Hammer. And Hammer. We're going to go with Hammer. I like that. I'll change it on the. We did. Okay. I think you have page. a Ben already, so I figured I'd go with the last. Do we name. have a? Do, do we, we ha- have a Ben? Do you have a Ben Dale? I I don't recall having a Ben. Is his last name over? Or, or <laughs> Dover? <laughs> ben Dover. Dover. You mean? Is his last name Dover? Dover. Is yeah. this a prank call? Are we? <laughs> <laughs> what are we? What's going on? We just the also had a in huge identity prank crisis. Call. This is Dale and. And then we like looked at each other like, who are we? I, I, I'm pretty sure that you're the only Ben. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. I like Hammer. Hammer's... Hammer is great. That sounds like name. someone who, who <laughs> fucks aggressively. Oh, dear. <laughs> right? Doesn't it? I'm sorry. Don't make you uncomfortable. It does sound like... It might... I shouldn't say that word too casually. We, might... Technically, we're on, we are allowed to cuss. But the less we cuss, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, already in like the first two minutes of the show, I'm already using the F-bomb. My name was supposed to be Jack Hammer, which would have been a great porn name. <laughs> you should have told... Oh, my God. Well, it, you should have it been can Jack. still be your porn name. You should have been <laughs> Jack. I, I'm sorry, but I, I think you should have been Jack. Uh, okay. Wow. So we're going we're gonna to cover... Before we get really cranking <laughs> oh, today, we're going to cover some quick stuff. Our quickies. We're going to cover our quickies. So the Lesbian Porn Viagra Boner Challenge has now is now over 400,000 views. Wow. And what I can't a, help but you you know I had a, a rather embarrassing moment in that video. Why would and you why would you be embarrassed? I had an embarrassing proud. moment. You should be like check this out. It, you know what if my shorts were like propped up like a foot out then I'd be really proud. Oh. But no but the, I had an embarrassing moment in that video and and this is not the way I would choose to be famous. If if you know if you're like oh you get to be famous like how would you choose to do that? Well, it would, would you, not be from getting a boner from watching lesbian porn. What would you choose? What would you want? It would be okay if you could be famous any way you want. How would I choose it? That's a good question. Yeah, this is a, this is too deep. This is. I I feel like you want to be famous for inventing something. I want to be famous for for saving a child. Oh, that's a good one. From too. a traffic accident, like rushing out and almost dying myself. And snatching up a child who was about to be crushed and saving them from dying. And then that video going viral. And then, it, and then get interviewed on show after show after show about how I saved a little child from, from almost certain death. And how you violated the non-aggression principle. I violated the non-aggression principle to save a child because I aggressively snatched the child up from the front of a moving car. Mm-hmm. And then I would be on Oprah. And I would be on Dr. Phil. I feel and I'll like be that, on all the major networks. That kind of fame tends to go like rocket up and then come back down. Whereas, like, yeah. your your video is just keeps getting hit over <laughs> time. <laughs> but getting a boner from lesbian porn, yeah, that's that's gonna have some longevity. When are you yeah. going to do the recount? Since it was found out that uh, at least one of the persons was uh, cheating. She, we're not discussing that. That's not on the table for discussion. Uh, that people think, were cheating. Wait, just just one. Why well, I, I know this of is, at least this one. Is, this quite the, we're not going to go into details about conspiracy. that. Conspiracy, but cons- the the conspiracy that we're introducing today, thanks to to Ben violating the rules, is I violated the rules. One no, no. or more people were cheating to some degree or other during the lesbian porn Viagra boner challenge. I thought that came out on one of your podcasts already. It kind of did, it but I snuffed did. it. I snuffed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, and related to that. There is, this is going to start playing. Hold on. Okay. So uh, related to that is, what is a gay card? Ben, if someone asked you, what is a gay card? How would you respond based on your limited information as a mm-hmm. token heterosexual? Uh, the, the serious response or the joking response? Uh, uh, we, we'll we'll go with the joking response first, okay. which is, that's one that gets you into all of the like uh, shopping districts and uh, uh, gyms, right? Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now, more seriously, I would, I would think that it's referring to, uh, basically, you know, whether or not you're gay enough to be qualified as gay. 
That's that's a pretty good. I think that's a pretty good guess. What would you call it? What would you say, Lauren? If someone said, "Hey, could you could you tell me about the rate? What is it? Gay the card? gay the card. gay card. Okay. See, I'm thinking in the in, in the lesbian head. porn Viagra boner challenge. The introduction says the loser gets their gay card revoked. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to introduce them to the the race card, which is a, a song by Ice Cube. And then I'd get all gangster on them, and then we'd have okay. a philosophical discussion afterwards. I'm not familiar with that song. You should the check race it out. card. People know what the race card is. It's something you pull, like mm. to to declare yourself a victim, right? Mm-hmm. Of uh... oh, is this about victimization? Because I love I, victimization. I, I hadn't really planned on it being, but I suppose it could be. All right, I, I'm bringing the playing, bringing it down. That, that, I'm no, sorry. That, that introduces a, a, a level of of thought that i hadn't considered i think ben's right the first the first answer that's obviously it well it's it's about there's sort it's of a 10 percent discount the shopping, out all the <laughs> shopping and yeah i'll tell you and, how and i all describe the best it. margaritas here's and, here's yeah. the thing there was someone uh I, I i mentioned this in the lesbian porn viagra boner challenge which now has over four hundred thousand views in the introduction to the video i kind of briefly describe what's going on and i said when a person someone asked what is a gay card and I thought, wow, what a moron. Yeah, what's like. your answer? And I answered, when a person proves his or her gayness in a satisfactory manner, it is issued to them by the International Council of Homos based out of Denmark. It entitles you to certain perks and discounts and grants protection from the gay mafia. Oh, oh see, I was pretty close. Okay. Pretty close. The discounts. Where, yeah. where do you, you get the discounts shopping, at? Shopping discounts. Yeah. Well, you know, Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, <laughs> what is the other super gay... Clothing. You're, place. you're asking me, um. uh, Lauren. Uh, who is the that has like a? The, um, see, this is what this is the mistake when I take too much show medicine. Gay, oh yeah, gay clothing. The dosage place. is very is a very careful. Thing. Uh, it's pre- it's pretty early for show medicine too. You you have to take a. <laughs> um, you're you're sacrificing one for um, the show for wi- uh, for women. I mean, like Abercrombie and Fitch is the other super oh, okay. gay. You get discounts at Abercrombie and Fitch. That's like super gay. Have you ever been to an Abercrombie and Fitch store? Did you not turn gay? Have you been to an Abercrombie and Fitch uh, store and no. didn't turn gay? I, I think I have like, been in one, but I didn't I, instantly I can't believe, turn gay. It's a clothing store, and I can't believe their advertisements. I can't believe how how much skin the advertisements show for a clothing store. Mm. What well, does it work? Apparently, they're super wealthy. Right. Of course, no, they, I mean, does it work on you? Was it Tommy Hilfiger or Abercrombie and Fitch that recently started that scandal where they said, we don't want homeless people wearing our stuff. We I, want like I rich believe, white kids wearing our stuff. I believe that was Phil, Hilfiger. Was it? Okay. It's brilliant. I thought, I thought it might have been the other one. Where he said he didn't want any fat or uh, homeless people wearing his clothing, which right. is why he didn't have the, the size up. And meanwhile, the, the, guy, the guy himself is old and like way too much plastic surgery and looks disturbing. He looks like, a, like an undead creature. Almost. Who's I wonder been if he wears his own stuff. I, I don't know. Mm. So, okay. Urban Dictionary Word of the Week is reverse gangbang. And so now, now I, we've got I a new way of doing... One. We have a new way right. of doing the Urban so Dictionary Word of the Week. Sex research project. Oh, it started to play. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started... The link was a, was a video. So, Ben... Uh, go to or, Lauren Lauren first. first. What do you think a reverse bang, gangbang is? Well, I, it was really hard for me not to look up this, this last night. I was going to type it in all over Google and just be like... But you knew that that would be cheating. Well, I also knew what I would find in image, image search. <laughs> so that's why when, when I was doing show prep, I was like, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll let Tail tell me. But let me, I'll try. I'll try. All right. Um, reverse gangbang. Well, again, let me, let me define what a gangbang is. First, it's when the, it's a group of people with one person having sex with this one person. They're all focused right. on the one person. They're not really focused on each other. So I think that's pretty good. So, so a reverse far. gangbang is someone with a lot with an attention deficit disorder. Obviously, that's a prerequisite. To it. <laughs> All right. Um, if, if, I'll give you a hint. Now that you've given your, uh, I'll give you a hint. Yeah. Do you are you familiar with Jamie Stroud? No. Oh no, that's the music. All right. Well, when we come back, so suspenseful. When we come back, we're going to get Ben's answer. I'm going to let people ponder this a little bit. Jamie Stroud is the one who introduced this concept to me. And uh, it's actually not in the Urban Dictionary. I was shocked. We come back. Really? Flaming Freedom oh, I know who is, is live. We hope you'll call in via In Your Head shows on Skype. This is your host, Dale. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. 
I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discussed LGBT topics from a liberty perspective what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless brat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. We are live via the Liberty Radio Network and via Ustream. So those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, you can listen to us live next week, which will give you the opportunity to call in, if you'd like, via Skype to the account in your head shows. And we welcome any questions or comments that you have live if you, uh, if you have the guts. If you have the uh, the if you have the ovaries, as Neil would say, the eggs, to call in live the cojones, the nads, the nads, the balls or the ovaries. I like the eggs too. That, that kind of makes me laugh. You know, those of you who aren't too timid, you can call in live. And if and, you have neither, like some people do, uh, that's right? Cool that's too. That's true. That's also call cool. On in. Of course, we're talking proverbially. Oh, this is flaming freedom. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. So uh, Hammer's back, I think the second time. And we were talking about what a reverse gangbang is. Lauren, did you have anything more to add? No. Your reverse gangbang I, was, I, I re- a, refresh I, us. I have no contribution to reverse gangbangs. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's not my thing. Okay. Well, so p- a refresher, though? I, no, I said it, it involves someone who has attention deficit disorder. So it's And it's uh, like an outward... Like, I don't know. Wow. Okay. So... I can't even picture Bit, uh, what this hammer. Like, what is your what is your uh, take on a reverse gangbang? So a gangbang would be many men and one person, or I don't know if it's technically a woman. Well, g- generally no, a woman, but a gay version would be the, a particular uh, yeah. guy. Wait, sure. so, generally wait, a gang wait, bang. time out, time out. Go ahead, Lauren. So what if there's one man and like a bunch of women? Hold on, around ben, uh, the uh, hammer. What's your what's your that, take? That on? would be what a reverse gangbang is, as far That's as I know. Stupid. A lot of women and one man. It yeah. Be, or why is it? Why does it matter? Like, I suppose well, and, one woman. And, and, and or why couldn't it be like one woman and a bunch of women around her? Why is I, the, it? Could be that. I don't. It could be. It I'm, could I'm be. I'm taking a, back gangbang. I think you should do Tonight. a. I should, you should do a video. You should shoot a video where lots of women are pleasuring you. Oh. And it would be an all female gangbang. Can I post it to the website? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding? I will post it on the YouTube. <laughs> the the YouTube. Viagra Bona tra- yeah. Challenge, too. We'd have to, like, censor it so much to not get taken down on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. 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 We post it on Xtube, and then we'll link to it. We'll put us a, a highly censored short version on YouTube and link to the Xtube or something like that. That might work. I don't know if you can even link to a, a porn in YouTube. Uh, sure, I think you can sure put just about any link you want in the description. Well, I mean, without getting it taken down, I don't. I don't think you would necessarily just from. I. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I. I am under the impression you can put any link you want in the description, and then presumably there are parental controls when you go to XTube. It asks you, "Are you over eighteen? So. Oh yeah, that works so well. <laughs> don't you love that thing? Like, oh, are you over eighteen? Like, yeah. Like, like that'll any kid, stop them. I can't wait. I, I'm. I'm trying to click. It's I just mustn't not working. Lie. My gr- my my nose will grow. I mustn't lie. All right. So, um, so we, so I want to cover something briefly, and and um, this is a little uncomfortable for me, but I feel like it needs to be discussed. I'm on a forum regularly, and someone on that forum. Well, are you going to say which one? Or are you trying to keep it secret? I kind of want to be discreet about okay. this. Right. I, I don't want to. Because you're a on thing. a lot of forums, so it could really be I any, anything. Someone, I think they commit suicide it hasn't been 100 percent validated but that's the uh. implication and this was a transgender person um and it wasn't obviously i didn't know them other than on the forum but i had interacted with them yeah so there's a certain uh yeah that that, that it, it 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 affected me 
Hmm. But it, but it was also kind of thing because I didn't really know the person. I didn't chime in and say and share my thoughts on what this this event. But it kind of brought it home for me that that this is that the suicide rates in the transgender community are high. Was the uh, support, uh, uh, higher than even LGBT community, which is higher than normal? I'm Sorry. I'm assuming that the uh, forum was relatively supportive of uh, the person before. Absolutely, yes. C- completely supportive. That's, so it's probably outside me. events that led to, to the circumstance, not yeah, that you can really know. I, I would li- I like to think so. I've had s- scuffles with this person, which I felt weird about. But I also resolved, I felt like I resolved and said, I have no ill feelings towards you. Everything is fine. You know, I, I that was the only last thoughts on that in it, that discussion. But it, it's still, you can't help but go, oh, how much did I contribute to this, right? It's so easy Wait, to get into Do you ever wonder, like, wars. what could I have you, done to stop you, it? Whenever so you know saying, someone who's who's committed suicide, do you ever wonder, like, what could I have done differently to keep prevent that from happening? Right, that's the better question, rather than to say, like, how did I contribute? Because I don't think you did. Like, I think it's, no, a, it's I, not about that. It's about... Right. I mean, on, 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 whenever, if, 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 if I ever heard someone say, like, I feel like I contributed to that in some way, I would tell them, no, no, you didn't. But when it's you... <laughs> it's, it's different. <sighs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, th- here's the thing. Like, I certainly would not take responsibility for it. That would be ridiculous. But on some level, if someone is in a lot of pain... And maybe you're in a scuffle with them over something kind of petty. You know, like how much did you, was that the straw? You know, but this was also, there's a, a fair amount of time passed between that two. Yeah. Before I said, no, no, it's, it's really, I have no ill feelings towards you. This is fine. And that's how, I res- that's how it ended. It's, it's sometimes hard online to tell if somebody is in a lot of pain. Because it's just, of course. Yeah. it's just text, and there's so much that's not conveyed this without was, having the body language and was, the... Inflection. This was a shock for everyone, I think, but no. not that much of a shock again because suicide rates in the transgender community are are high, and and that's something I think that as a society we need to be looking at. Was the suicide rate uh, has the suicide rate amongst uh, uh, people who are gay or queer? I don't know what term to use for. That's fine. Uh, I don't care. Um, uh, have they gone down <clears throat> since it's become uh, better? That's a good question. That's a, I have, a great question. I am not sure, but that's I'm curious about that. If anyone knows, if you actually know, I don't have time to Google. My it intuition right. would tell me that it has. You would right. think that, mm-hmm. and you would think would that think the so. uh, the opposite or the same thing is going to happen right. once uh, transgender people become more accepted. I think it's 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 already getting so much better, but there's a long way to go. And I, and I agree. I think in, it, I would expect it to go down. And part of that isn't necessarily harm reduction, but it's based on a growing population. Like as more right. people identify as queer, then you have a community you, you can a relate to and to talk draw and, from. So the, the right. statistic will go go down. Okay. I, I would um, doubt that the population is actually growing, but more of uh, that no, people are coming are, are out. Are actually more. coming out? Yeah. Like so, the numbers are getting more accurate. Right. Um. And and that, and that means a growing community that you can relate to that you can you can talk to that you can have support from right and then that also a growing chunk of the population that's not going to be a douche about it yeah so that i th- certainly think that's a big factor what 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 infuriates me is when socially conservative groups will point at suicide rates amongst gay and transgender people and say look this shows that it's not a healthy thing. Mm. <laughs> and i'm like yeah you're the reason dumbass you are the reason why those suicide rates are high and they've done studies and, in fact, said, yes, the reason why the suicide rates are high is because of not the, not the in essence, being gay or transgender, but rather the society's, of rea- currently of the, uh, society's reaction and, and, and uh, lack of support and, and the hatred toward those people. So the, the people claiming that there's something wrong with it because of the high suicide rates are the cause of the high suicide rates themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what's infuriating is for them to then point at that and go, to cause it, and then go look. It's not natural. Wow, well, that's some fudge up. Break. This that's is some a, fudge this up is a stuff. Bummer. Yeah, don't say I'm, break. That's oh. a no-no. That's a no-no in in, oh, okay. in radio world. Sorry. Before no, we're, we're we'll be back shortly. So you should stay tuned for some messages from our sponsors. My we'll be head- right back. This is Flaming Freedom. Stay My tuned. headphones are staying on. Good morning, folks, and thank you for listening to us instead of going to church this morning. You get extra brownie points for being blasphemous. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. And 
This is Flaming Freedom. You can check out our website at flamingfreedom.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash flamingfreedom. Please go there and click like. You can also find us on YouTube. We are now called Flaming Freedom because Google Plus dropped their stupid name, Tyranny. You can now use the name that you want on Google+. Plus. I noticed that, and now I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't actually find any of our videos because it was, all, yeah, it was all backwards. I was like, where's... Oh, because you're looking for Prometheus, Prometheus Unchained? Yeah, I was... Interesting. Well, you I should just be subscribed. And if you want to well, listen, I, folks... No, I, I don't log in sometimes. Oh, okay. I, I connect right. your tour and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Well, here's the easy way. I'm going to tell it for your sake and for our listeners. Teach if you want to get to our YouTube channel, just go to flamingfreedom.com. There's lots of links to our videos. Click on any one of them, and you're now on our YouTube channel. And then while and wh- you're there, you can subscribe. While you're there, you can click subscribe. Mm-hmm. While you're there, you can click on our click on the channel itself and see all of our other videos that are available, including the Lesbian Porn by Agrabona Challenge that now has over 400,000 views. It broke that just in the last day or two. And maybe you can analyze it and break the conspiracy of who cheated. Right. Figure out who cheated. I'm curious to hear people's uh, oh, theories there's, there's of the quite cheating. The theory. And yeah. I won't go into it because it's, it's pretty deep. Like it's, the, uh, the, the rabbit hole is deep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, I've been a subscriber of Flaming Freedom or Prometheus Unchained on YouTube since the beginning. Like the very first oh, wow. like, week that you had it on there. Oh, wow. That's yeah. uh, impressive. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're getting steadily. We get a new subscriber every day about roughly. Yeah. Uh, well, that's it, a good rate. And I'm hoping that that will grow. That, 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 that sort of thing tends to grow exponentially. If people are enjoying the videos, hopefully they'll share them. Once you get a critical like, mass. Yeah. You folks are not clicking like on YouTube, by the way. You need to understand, if you click like on Facebook, that's one thing. But then you go watch the video on YouTube, you click like again. And we need you to do that, and you folks aren't doing it. I'm just letting you know. I favorite everything. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. That's Twitter, though, right? No, no, no. On, on YouTube, you can favorite things, too. Oh, that's right. That's but I right. think it just creates a playlist. It doesn't actually affect I think it metrics. Af- it does, I think it affects metrics if you favorite something. I don't know. I think, they, I think that affects metrics maybe more, powerful than, more powerfully than... Liking. So um, let's talk about evangelical morality. This person wrote an article, which we'll link to, as always. Is evangelical Christian morality still viable in American public life? Now, what this person then goes into is, he talks about, for instance, the Hobby Lobby decision. He talks about Christian bakers who object to baking cakes for gay weddings. And this this is going to be a challenging thing to talk about, because... On the one hand, I, I, I absolutely believe that there should not be laws in, that ban discrimination. Discrimination is a part of doing business to a point. Oh, dear. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a, good, business, it's a good business practice to discriminate. Are you, are you concerned? Are you worried? No, I, I'm, I've, I've right. been having this discussion for the last, like, 72 hours about, oh. about discrimination in the workplace. So. Okay. So... Discrimination is good when it's relevant to the job, right? If you were yeah. hiring a math teacher, you would discriminate on the basis of her math ability or his math ability he and their ability to teach. That would be a factor to discriminate on. If you discriminated on, a base, on some factor that really should be completely irrelevant, like their race or their religion or their sexual orientation, then you're... You might turn away a good math teacher for someone who's not as good of a math teacher over a stupid reason. Yes. You're going to get a suboptimal pick. Right. Uh, and no. that would affect your business detrimentally. That would, uh, in a detrimental fashion. Well, but, it could potentially. Right. Yes. Our, yeah. our, our, and th- it should. There's, and, cer- there's yeah. certainly another way to look at discrimination, too. You could look at it as a preference. Right? You have preferences for certain things or certain people or, or things that you like. Right? It's a much more positive, happy, like, Look at this. I like this. This is right. what I like, rather than saying what you don't like. Like Latino guys. Yeah. Like, that's a preference. <laughs> I appreciate that you am can I say racist? what you like. Am I racist because I have a preference no, for Latino guys? No, you're not. Guys. You just you have something and you're celebrating your joy, I sort of your acknowledge. I feel, like I'm a, I feel like I'm a little bit racist, but I should be allowed to be a little bit racist. I think everybody is when it comes to selecting a partner. Really? To a certain can extent. Can you say yeah. that? Like, can you say everybody is a little bit racist? I don't know. I, I feel like everybody Maybe. has a preference of some sort. Like for, yeah, people claim but not to, but I, I wonder if they're being politically correct. It's important to recognize that that preference is entirely variable all the time. Yeah. Okay. Like you're not, yeah. like it's, like when it doesn't become variable, then that means you're starting to be a bigot or you're starting to be narrow minded or actually 
problematic. Like imagine racist. if it was just a, if it was a deal killer for me. Like, nope, I don't. I will not date you because you're not Latino. So buzz off. Yeah, then you're racist. That's getting kind of racist. Yeah, there. But yeah. you might have some kind of preference based on past experiences that affects yeah. the way that your brain works. Right. It's, it's, it's kind I, of. I can't help that. I can't help that. I've had really positive experiences with Latino guys that has biased me. Yeah. It, it you might have be good fond memories. It might be kind of racist, but at the same point, does the person that's not a Latino want to be like, you have to date me, regardless of your preference? Oh, I've heard people say that. I've had people do that. I remember a guy was like, uh, I remember I was like online, this guy had contacted me, and I'm not big on online dating, uh, you know, but I, I, this guy had contacted me, and, he, and I asked him, oh, well, can you send, send me a picture? And I'll promise to send a picture back. And, and I did send a picture back, but like he sent me the picture. And it was two different people, both of whom were not at all attractive to me. I won't say they're... Uh, no, okay, they were ugly. They were both ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, in my opinion. Totally from my biased point of view. To mm -hmm. someone else, they would have been beautiful, quite possibly. But I thought they were both very unattractive. One was black and one was white. And he goes, well, well, well you, I didn't even tell you which one was me. And I said, well, it doesn't matter. I don't find either of them attractive. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for, like, the gotcha moment, right? Yeah. And then he said I was being racist. Uh, apparently, he was the black one. There was, like, a black person and a white person. Okay. They were both. Both of them were just, honestly, I, I, I was not at all physically attracted to either of them. And uh, and so, but no, he, I was a racist because, like, he, he was, he wanted to make me feel guilty because I had rejected him. Right. Supposedly, well, for, he wanted to make it about his race, and it wasn't. It sounded like he went on with some kind of monologue that he had planned ahead of time. Like, he wanted you to pick the wrong one, and then, and then he had this whole thing he was going to say to you. And when you picked neither, and you're like, you threw him off, he's just like, oh, I'm still going to yeah. get to my monologue and just say, hey. I wonder what it was. Now, had he, a, had he found yeah. a really hot white guy <laughs> to put in the picture with him? Well, we, we don't know if he was the black guy or See, the white guy. See, unfortunately, he didn't do that. He picked, like, an, uh, an also very unattractive, like... I would say these guys were almost exactly equally unattractive to me. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, somebody from the Abercrombie and Fitch uh, catalog. Right. To bring sure. it back. If he had, oh, <laughs> oh, here's a picture. And then I would have said, well, which one are you? And then when I had said, oh, you know, and when he told me, I'd said, oh, I'm not attracted to you. He'd go, you're racist because you like the white guy, but not me. But see, I would be, that would be a case where I'm and not that's a great way to pick someone up. Like, oh yeah, yeah, totally. You should totally start your relationship over racism. Yeah. yeah. I, I think he might have been a troll. I don't think, yeah. he might not have been you, serious. No. I think he might have been like messing with me. He might not have been either one. It's that ridiculous. Right. Exactly. He, I it's bet he that wasn't ridiculous. Even really, I bet he wasn't gay either. Like, I bet this but, was really just a. But here's the thing. When you, when you introduce discrimination laws, there's now this card you can play that increases litigation. Like, a company might fire you for very good reasons oh, or not hire you for very valid, relevant reasons. But if you happen to be a minority of some sort, you now have a card you can play. Ben, you're screwed. Yeah. You are a straight, cisgendered, white male. Well, you ain't got no cards to play. I do have a card to play. Oh, what is your card? I'm, I'm Jewish. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's cool. That's like a pretty good one. You got, like, the Holocaust you can whip out on people. You can whip out all kind of... You can talk about, like, the Egyptian slavery shit. I can call people anti-Semites. You can call them anti-Semite. You got, you got a card to play. I do. I was, I was mistaken about that. Hmm. So, um, so, yeah, in a sense, it's, it's kind of funny how this... A lot of this, it's, it almost feels like people are trying to turn the tables, like right? Because, like, white, heterosexual, cisgendered males supposedly have a, a tremendous amount of privilege in society... And so people are like, let's use affirmative action so that we have like this whole deck of cards in our hands that we can whip out if we don't get our, what we want. It's interesting because, um, uh, like, like you were saying beforehand, it uh, you, you want to pick the best person for a particular job or whatever task that you're right. you're selecting, but. It's kind of affirmative action is trying to force you to pick the less attractive. Oh yeah, option. absolutely, absolutely, it's trying to do that. Flaming freedom. LGBT libertarian shooting the poop. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. Those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, please keep in mind that next week from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern time, you can tune in live either via the Liberty Radio Network that streams live constantly, 24 hours a day, various liberty-oriented programs that you might enjoy, or you can watch us live via Ustream. We now have cams in the studio, and if you want to look at our ugly mugs while we're talking, you can do that. Speak for yourself. This is your host, Dale. 
And Hammer. And Lauren. So uh, I kind of veered quite a bit off topic. We kind of got into the notion of discrimination. And, and, and generally speaking, if you're a libertarian, you do not favor laws against discrimination. And there are various reasons for that. Like, for one thing, I don't want to actually, I want to know if someone's a bigot and I don't want to work for them. I am a gay person myself. I don't favor laws that say you cannot discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation, for instance. So I feel like I can speak to that from a fairly personal point of view. Uh, that said, this is an int- This is always a controversial topic. It is, because I can see why they exist. I do. I understand right. it. They, and like These laws exist I believe because there wrong. are other laws that are wrong. Like, but this, yeah. the root issue is there are laws that cause problems so that everyone's fearful and not going to be open and honest about their feelings. So therefore, we have to have more laws on top of those laws. That's <laughs> right. the problem. And it the, is kind the, of a and domino the secondary problem. laws, like mm. there's really great people behind those secondary laws. There's people who are standing up for the underdog, for st- you know, standing up for the weak, and 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 I applaud them greatly. Right. But the root of the issue is the first law. Right. Like the first sin. Not to take it there. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> it's really, a domino I'm throw effect. You off. It's a kind of domino it, it effect. It absolutely is. And here's the thing. I I think if you want to get into my morality, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. I, I don't want anything to do with the kind of person who decides to discriminate on the basis of these silly factors, like mm. your sexual orientation, or your if you're transgender, or if you're uh, a minority race, or a majority race, who knows why, a religion, things like that. But what this artic- what bugs me about this article is they're trying to, the article is essentially defending the notion of exemptions. They're not arguing against discrimination laws. They're arguing for an exemption for people based on their religious beliefs. And the, I, and the thing here is this guy's going, what is going on in the world? Like, we're being discriminated against because you're not giving Christians a special exception to these laws. Uh, yeah. Right? Mm. And I'm saying fudge that. Fudge that all to hell and back. Uh, we, whatever laws we do have, if we're going to put these discrimination laws in effect, it is the most blatant hypocrisy to say we're going to discriminate in favor of certain religions by letting them have an, an out for this we're going to let them discriminate we're going to ban everyone else from discriminating what about if what about me like i have a feeling <laughs> if they decide to create religious exemptions for things like this like okay you're uh, you're allowed to discriminate against gay people now because you're uh, a christian who has strong moral beliefs about this it could be a fun loophole to play with though well that's my question mm. if i have a satanist bakery <laughs> <laughs> are they going to let me discriminate against christians satanism is almost defined by being against christianity like everything like the morality of christianity is fudged up i sincerely believe that uh, and so satanism is almost defined by what christianity isn't what would you call said satanist bakery just out of curiosity oh good question um little horny's bakery <laughs> <laughs> Devil may care. Uh, I don't know. Help me come up with something, Lauren. I don't know. I Satan, don't know. Satan's little helper. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, sweet, devil's sweet devil's Satan food cake delights. Or, I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't get inspired <laughs> by all this, this that stuff. All right. Yeah, Fair not, enough. It's not my thing. I'm, Fair more, I'm more of the like halo over the head kind of thing. So um, the, the, that's what bugs me about this article. I'm against discrimination laws, but if we're gonna, we either do away with them or we don't. And you don't get an, an exception, you don't get a special exemption from the law because of your religion. Well, and, and the interesting thing about uh, having an exception due to the, your religion is, given how much religion there is in this country, doesn't that give most companies really a, an exemption to the law? Well, of course, Christianity is the majority. What, what's happened is Christianity, Christians have had control over the law for a long time. They've had their the ability to use the law to impose their morality on other people, they're losing that. And they're just clinging to whatever they can to try and maintain some kind of control. And they are still a majority in the culture, but it's weaker. It's certainly, there are a chunk of Christians who don't feel like they should do that, for instance. Mm-hmm. And, and, and kudos to you, by the way, if you're one of those who doesn't believe in imposing your morality on people through the law. But, for instance, like the argument here is that you're, for, by, for instance, by making... A bakery make a cake for a gay wedding or making Hobby Lobby pay for certain birth control or whatever, which I'm, I'm scared to go there because I'm in favor of the Hobby Lobby decision, actually. Um, that you are uh, essentially making, you're forcing a, 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 someone to defy the morality of their religion. By, by, not just by, by, by making them actually support something, like pay for abortion or pay for 
or, or, or make a cake for a gay wedding. You're making them actually support the wedding. Now, I, I understand that, and I'm against discrimination laws, like I said. That said, I don't believe in making exceptions for them, because that's, you're, you are discriminating now. You're discriminating on the basis of religion. Like, the atheist doesn't get to discriminate on whatever basis. Yeah. They don't get to say, well, I don't like gay people. I, I have my own reasons. Well, your, real, your own reasons don't matter. This person has an official book that's 2,000 years old. They get different freedoms than you. They get more freedoms than you because of that book. I still and that's bull manure. I, I don't understand why somebody would want somebody that's angry with them making their wedding cake. <laughs> right. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you. And in fact, there was a, an anniversary. Some lesbians were having an anniversary, and the wedding cake was horrible. Like, on purpose. They screwed up the wedding cake on purpose to insult them. And, think, and why would you want to give them your business? We have right? a photo of that in our archives of our yes. website. Yes, one of our shows, in fact, has a picture of the wedding cake, which mm -hmm. is just... It looks like a three-year-old made it. Yeah. It's... And it has an insulting... Like, they, they totally misunderstood. They didn't misunderstand, but they pretended to misunderstand the message in order to put something ridiculous on the cake and everything. It was just an, it was a slap in the face. I think they misunderstood. They should have just told lesbian, them, we're not going to make a cake for you. I, see, and, 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 and that's the thing. Like, they should have just... If, they, if, if there weren't laws, then they wouldn't have done this roundabout dig. Yep. At the lesbian couple. They would have yeah. just said, we don't want to make a cake for you. Mm -hmm. And then if the lesbian couple had any sense about them, they would go and tell all their friends, don't go to this bakery. They're douche nozzles. And they would go somewhere else and give their money to someone else and not give their money to those idiots at that cake place, at that bakery. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that's, that's, the, that's my take on it. I want to know who the bigots are. I don't want to support them. I don't want to work for them. I don't want to give them my money. But these laws hide them from us because they're not, they can't come out and say it for fear of legal retribution. Yep. But I want to use all the other retributions, like not buying from them, and, not working for and them. And therefore that increases suffering because they find all kinds of other manipulative ways to destroy your life secretly right. that you don't know about, that you can't prepare for. And if you want to do anything about it, good luck. You get, to, you get to go try and find a lawyer, go through the legal system and all that. And if they did it in an Most underhanded enough way, right, it's just not a viable option for a lot of people. Mm. This is so, so I'm against discrimination on these bases. It, like morally, I think it's wrong. That doesn't mean I think the government is the solution. And that's what I think people have trouble understanding. But I will say this, that, that uh, we all should have freedoms, and we should all have the same freedoms regardless of your religion. And I, so I, I talk about, for instance, f religious freedom versus just plain freedom. Like you're, you should, of course you should be able to practice your religion, as long as you're not violating the law. Like, obviously, you can't have human sacrifice as one of your religious tenets because you, that's murder. You don't make it. We aren't going to make an exception for that, are we? Oh, your religion says you have to do human sacrifice. Well, OK, then we'll we'll make an exception for you. No, we all have the same freedoms, period. We need to decide what freedoms we should have, which I, for, as from a libertarian perspective is a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of freedom, but not killing people. Right. Presumably. Right. right. Um, so. Somebody so. came up with a name, Hell's Kitchen, the Satanist Bakery, oh. which is, I think isn't there a show called Who Hell's Kitchen? Who are you Kitchen? talking to? Are you uh, I'm talking to the chat. I'm trying oh, something nice. new. I'm, I'm stepping it up. Nice. I'm, I'm glad that we have someone paying attention to the chat. Yeah. There's That's... a lot of great chatters in here. There's like five of them talking to me right now. Because I cannot. I do not, as, as, the, as the main host, yeah, I can't like, afford to pay attention arm, to the chat. You need like a, four extra arms I, yeah, I do. I would like to have four extra arms just because that would be oh, like dear. hot. Here we go. That would be hot, wouldn't it? Like... <laughs> Done. Like, <laughs> I could fondle people in so many different ways. Go ahead, Ben. You you've been be the, You could be the reverse gangbang. Hammer. You've been oh no, I was just, I was just going to say that. Uh, that's Ramsey's show, I believe, is what you're is, referring to. Is he Satan? Uh, n no, but some people might argue that he is. He, he is pretty loud and um, swears a lot. I don't know if that qualifies. <laughs> I don't oh, think that's oh, the definition. Gordon, Gordon Ramsey, yeah. right? Yes. By the oh, way, yes. folks, a little I, quick educational point of trivia. Satan refers to the the uh, opponent or the adversary. That's all I mean. It's not a name. It's more like a title. So Satan refers to the adversary. So when I say I'm a Satanist, it means I am an adversary of Christianity. And uh, and it's all symbolic. I don't believe in any kind of magical. I don't believe in heaven and hell. I don't believe in. I'm an atheist essentially, or at least agnostic. And uh, it's all symbolic. I I don't believe in a guy with pitchfork and horns and all that silliness. Just to be clear. In case anyone's wondering. Okay. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. The second hour is we'll, coming up. We'll be right back. Listen to some messages from our sponsors, please. And uh, we'll be right back. So stay tuned. 
Thank you for sticking around, folks. You are listening to Flaming Freedom. You can find our website at flamingfreedom.com, where you have access to our videos, to download our podcast for free, and things like that. You can also go to facebook.com slash flamingfreedom, click like, and share that with all your friends. We encourage you to do so. We need you to click like and share on our content when we post it on Facebook to help get the word out. Uh, you can also join Flaming Freedom Evangelists, which is a group formed specifically to help and spread the word on Facebook when we put new content out. If you really uh, want to help the show, that's a great way to do it without costing you a penny. All you got to do is click the left button on your mouse a couple times each time new content comes out. Think about how much you can help. All you have to do is click that left button two times. Oh, it might be four times because I think they make you validate. Like, they very, are you sure you want to do this? Yes. So you might have to click four times. But you can help us so much with just those four clicks. You can help Flaming Freedom so much. So join Flaming Freedom Evangelist. You will get an email from us on Facebook about maybe twice a week or, or less most times, most weeks, when we put new content out. But that's a great way to help the show, and it doesn't cost you a penny. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. So I want to uh, add one more thing. And uh, I am libertarian. This is uh, a fact of the show. Sorry. But but when I think about discrimination laws, the one time, I, the, the thing that makes me relate to liberals who support these laws more than anything else is when it's actually hard to get a job because so many people discriminate. Like if it's an actually widespread thing, which I feel is the case right now with transgender, more so than gay or anything else, a race, religion sexual orientation i feel like being transgender right now is something that people are so douchey that it can actually make it hard for you to just get work but i and, think you're, you're focusing on the fundamental reason why these laws exist and you're right. so you're so, are you agreeing with the laws or no are you, no no but I, under, I what i'm saying is i can empathize i can empathize with people who want these sorts of laws mm-hmm. because uh and, and 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 at some point like for instance the really the worst it, it, here's the thing though you need a little education because Back in the days of like Jim Crow and really bad racial discrimination, some of the first, some of the first cases of discrimination happening on a wide scale, widespread scale, the huge vast majority of that was the government itself discriminating. And this is one area where, even as a libertarian, I feel like the government itself should not be allowed to discriminate. They should they should have policies in place against racial discrimination, against religious discrimination, against LGBT discrimination. All these these policies, I think, are totally valid as long as the government's around. If the government's mm-hmm. going to take tax money and spend it on things, there's a case right now where Obama is has declared, for instance, that he's not going to hire subcontractors for jobs unless they have policies in place against these sorts of discrimination. That, I think, is valid. Yeah, and, and in New Hampshire, a lot of local municipalities have actually done that. In, New, in yeah. uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, um, if you are a public employee or if you try to be one, they cannot discriminate due to your gender. And, or or yeah. transgender or okay. gender variant status, whatever the, I don't know the wording of the world. All that stuff. But, yeah, LGBT. You say yes. that, but usually the way those laws come in place are usually stating quotas. Like you need to have this uh, many, this many of uh, this, this specific, up. you know. Yeah. Like uh, I know I'm from Arizona originally and back there there's laws against the government discriminating, which by that means I, that they have to have specific companies do the work because it has to be uh, like a uh, minority-owned company in order to qualify for their anti That's affirmative action, and yeah. I don't approve of that ever. Okay. I don't ever approve of even the government engaging in affirmative action. But, for instance, Obama, I, my understanding, and someone can educate me if I'm wrong, again, the Skype channel is in your head shows. You can Skype us and correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is what Obama signed as an executive order recently was in terms of the government contracting out for any kind of job to a company, all they, all, what I understand is the company simply has to have policies against discrimination on the basis of LGBT. In addition, of course, already there's laws protecting against race, race. religion, other things. But as far as LGBT, they have to have policies against discrimination. That, that They do not require affirmative action, to my understanding, and that would really bother me. Because affirmative action is just... Discriminate a new form of discrimination. That's all. It's just, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. Hmm. So um, that's my understanding. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. So um, now here's a uh, an article that says that uh, 
It's, it's from Right Wing Watch. It's called Peter La Barbara. Says doctors who perform sex reassignment surgery should be imprisoned. Yes. So this is someone who feels so strongly about this subject that is, it's he's taking the same point of view as a lot of pro lifers that if you're a doctor who performs an abortion, then you're a murderer. But this is really radical. This is someone who comes to you consensually, an adult. An adult comes to you and asks for sex reassignment assistance, and you provide it. He wants to, he thinks those people should be in prison. He thinks that should be a crime, a completely consensual activity between adults. I don't know how he would actually justify that. Yeah. Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, uh, this is, uh, is this my Christian derp of the week? What's, what is my Christian derp? Hold on. What, what's going to be uh, next? Somebody? It is. It is my Christian derp oh. of the week. I'm wondering what's next. Is the the Catholic going to go to a, a a person that sells condoms and be like, "You you should be in prison because you're selling contraception." You're killing people. You're killing sperms. Mm -hmm. you, you you denied them the opportunity to fertilize an egg. But that makes more sense than the, the <laughs> sex reassignment surgery, right? right? Well, that, like, that is kill, true. Like, it it does make sperm is more wrong. Sense. They're should, both ridiculous. The sperms. They're you, both ridiculous, but this is far more ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This is completely... I can at least understand. I understand someone who's strongly pro-life. I, I don't agree. I'm, I'm pro-choice, but I, I don't agree with them. But I understand where they're coming from. In their eyes, it's murder. But this is ridiculous. This We're talking about a completely consenting adult. Uh, are you going to do the same thing if someone wants to go to a plastic surgeon and, and get the, the folds in their eyelids corrected? That's true. You should be the way to go. I would definitely you. try to talk Neil out of it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't forcefully <laughs> stop him. Oh, okay. You're, you're th Neil doesn't like Neil wants the epithelial folds. I think he calls them, but whatever. But I'm talking about just people who get older and they get little folds. You get your eyelids get little folds. Oh, oh I see. Oh, and they're just to make you look younger. You get the folds taken out. Or you get the Botox. In theory, it can actually impede your vision, but it's like a tiny bit. <laughs> Because actually, even with your eyes open, there's like a little skin kind of hanging down. It could block your vision in theory. Ew. So like, you can actually get insurance to cover this sometimes. But right. is that? But should that person go to jail because they did plastic surgery on someone? Cle clearly, they should. Yeah. Well, yeah, because plastic <laughs> surgeons have so much money, I'm guessing no. Oh, you know. Okay. Right. So uh, this is this is I think qualifies for Christian derp of the week. Um, Peter LaBarbera, Barbara, Barbara, <laughs> too much show well, medicine. You know, I haven't actually <laughs> gone on, show. um, on the SoundCloud page yet and listened to all of these things, but his, his site is called Right Wing Watch, I believe. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and I still have to go listen to all of the audio clips. I've only just read the article, but I, it really didn't explain his logic at all. Now, but see, I, that, I suppose you really can, right? Yeah. There's now, probably... see, this is something that I talked to, I talked to Antigone about this. You know, Antigone does She's Sex, Lies, and Anarchy, and you're on her show sometimes. Sometimes she lets me go on. Yeah. And Sex, Lies, and Anarchy will focus on one topic for the entire show, which is, I kind of admire that. Like, that there's an in-depth discussion about one topic. It's a very well-researched show. And it's one of the few shows that I listen to regularly. I, I'm not completely caught up, but I make a point to, like, listen to all... SLAs. I feel like I get educated a little you bit. You should really get caught up. There's been a couple yeah. of really good ones. Yeah, yeah, I intend to. Hmm. So, um, so I admire her for that. And I kind of joked about how she does research <laughs> that I don't necessarily do for my show. About the, uh, then, the then again, though, I cover, by how you mean like the way I that she does multiple, research. She researches it all. Oh yeah. And relatively the, speaking, the I read the art, I read words. these articles. Oh, yeah, I, awesome. I try to make a point to read the entire article. But no, I haven't listened to the, I haven't listened to all the audio for this. She doesn't do it weekly, does she? Yes, she does. Yeah. Oh, I, I mm -hmm. didn't yeah. think there was one every week. I thought mm -hmm. occasionally she skips. Every week, two nine. However, she does focus on just one topic, whereas we kind of cover four, six, eight topics. Maybe. And they do live broadcasts 9 p.m. Yeah, well, that's a new thing, a relatively new every, thing. Uh, right? Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. So we have one more segment with Lauren. So we'll decide what we want to talk about while Lauren remains in the studio. Because Lauren does have to go. Yes, um, sadly. Unfortunately. Uh, and then we'll decide what we're going to talk about while Ben and I remain here. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. Stay Bye. tuned. FlamingFreedom.com will be back shortly. Good morning, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. Flaming Freedom is a show where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. If you want to 
be a little fancier about it. It's where we discuss LGBT topics from a libertarian perspective. Mm. And then there are some people who don't shoot any poop because we're really anal. <laughs> yes. And we're not really libertarian. Or are we? Well, you say you're not or libertarian. Are we? I, I want to argue with you. Or are we just having an identity crisis? Sometime when we don't just have one segment left with you here, I want to discuss this whole notion of you saying you're not libertarian. Bring when, it As on. far as I can tell, Bring everything about you is libertarian. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue. I'm going to have a debate about that. I'm ready. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And Lauren. All right. So Lauren uh, is still here for one more segment, so Hello. we're going to take advantage of that. We were just talking about this article that suggests that doctors who perform sex reassignment surgery, which really I think gender reassignment is more commonly the term used now, should be arrested and imprisoned, which is absurd. Uh, this is our Christian derp of the day. But that I, leads into my next topic, which is about brain transplants as a way of curing LGBT problems. Mm, that sounds like a surgery that'll work. Yeah. Well, imagine, here's this. Imagine your parent, your, your son or daughter, is either gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. Awesome. Oh, no. Somewhere on the LGBT spectrum, okay? And the doctor tells you, we don't have a cure for that, but uh, we haven't up to now had a cure for that, but we have... Uh, an option now. We can do brain transplants, and we have this kid who's on life support and is going to die, but his brain is totally healthy. His body is, has problems. His brain is totally healthy, and he has no LGBT issues whatsoever. So mm -hmm. if we transplant his brain into your child, your child will no longer be LGBT. It is a, it is a complete cure, you know, because we have perfected brain transplants. Now, how would you feel about that as well, a parent? Are you transplanting the, the memories and the consciousness? Well, of course. All, oh, you are. Okay. Of course. I mean, if you want your child to be completely cured of this problem, you need someone whose brain does not have that problem, right? Because you have a wiring problem. Lauren, you and I, Ben doesn't have it. Uh, he's fortunate. Right. You, but you and I have a wiring problem in our brain. Like yeah. my, brain wire, my brain wiring makes me attracted to men, mm -hmm. even though I am a man myself. And your brain wiring says you're a woman. So it's just like installing a new ECU on your car. Right, just, right. You just, yeah, you you just, just fix the operating swap system. It out. It's, a, it's a complete swap. You're swapping than... out windows for Ubuntu. Yeah. That, oh, well, that you should definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm totally for it. If, so if that's the analogy, yeah. Me. So do you have any problem with this as a parent? That, that you know, I mean, it'll be a completely different kid at that point, right? They won't be your kid. It, right? It's it'll not be a your different, kid anymore, really. It's not your kid. Your kid's dead. Yeah. You're killing your kid. Whoa, this just got dark. You're killing your kid so they won't be gay LGBT anymore. So here's my thing. Sorry. Here's my thing. Here's the, here's the point I'm trying to make. If your wiring in your brain is a certain way, our brains, more than anything else, now I would certainly argue that our, we are in, in a complete person. The hormones, our bodies, our brains, they're all interconnected. But more than anything else, our brains define who we are. Mm -hmm. Right, your personality, your memories, everything about you is in your brain. So altering your body to fit your brain is much less of a radical change than people who say you, we should fix your brain. Yeah, so you're gay or you're transgender. We need to fix the brain. Okay, that's turning you into a different person. That is killing the person Are that you, you were to become a new and different person. You ready to have your minds blown? As uh, a true. Yeah. Okay, so there are trans people who go through m medical processes to change their brain. In fact, that's the only reason I am who I am and why I look the way I look. It's not about looks, it's about my head. It's about what's inside there. Because prior to taking certain chemicals that affect my brain chemistry, I used to be a very different, unhappy person. So it's a, mm. it really is about changing your brain. Not through surgery, though, of course. Right. Yeah, but it's about making it the way that works best for the rest of your thoughts and your consciousness. So, and what you're saying is, it w the hormones affected how you think, how you think as well, it and is. they made and you how, feel a way that I, you didn't yeah. like because you were a female. No, the hormones feel great. Well, because your brain was wired for female. Per yeah, perhaps. Per right, perhaps right. there was some like a wiring issue, so and it's, then it's, therefore it's like getting everything in alignment with your brain. Yeah, with your identity. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I, that's my, that's what I'm trying to say is, uh, those, those who think that this is a radical thing you're doing, like why change, why change your body? Why don't you fix your brain to fit your body? You're, you, the suggestion that you're making is a kind of death. You're, you're killing the person who was 
to become a completely different person. Right. That is much more radical than changing your body well, if to you have, fit your identity. If you have a lot of anger and maybe suffering around, uh, like if you're a uh, male to female person tra- transitioning or not transitioning, um, transgender person, and you say to yourself, well, I, I get really upset when I feel this like testosterone type feeling. And I know most people would think to themselves, well, that's like, it doesn't even occur to most cisgendered people. But if that's what makes you angry and if that's what makes you upset and you don't want to be a part of that, then to get away from that is good. And if you were to actually try to change your brain, like if some Christian came along and injected a female to male, no, I'm sorry, male to female, whatever, like a, <laughs> if me, for example, if someone yes. came and injected me with testosterone and said, you need to be more like a man, then I would, I would hate that. And I would probably want to kill myself. It, they are Back trying to, the, they're trying yeah, to kill you. For you. They're trying to change you into something you're not. Right. I mean, this is, this is what I'm trying to get at, people. Your identity is your life. Yes. And to change it radically is at least a partial death. And, and, and that's why you're so angry. I think it's completely I'm not, justified. I'm actually really happy and, I'm, well, and, not, and not angry. I'm at the idea. The, the idea inspires anger in you because that person is trying to inject a poison. They're trying to kill off a part of you. Yes. I, oh, go I, ahead, man. I'm going to play uh, Baker here and play devil's advocate. Okay. Is, um, it, it, oh, you that say that great, about... That was a great joke. I just got it. You say <laughs> that about... Because you're in Hell's uh, Kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he tied in the joke from earlier. That's he totally awesome. took our foreshadowing and tied it in. Our, to the, um, of course. You, you say that, and if you look at it from uh, an LGBT... Uh, the acronym say, you perspective. Can say, you can say queer. The alphabet soup. Yeah, the alphabet soup perspective. It makes sense. But then, like, if you change your perspective on that and look at it from somebody who has psychological issues, um, maybe not a, a anti-authoritarian disorder, whatever they're calling that <laughs> now, but <laughs> right. like uh, somebody with uh, multiple personalities or something like that, they're often prescribed drugs that change their brain chemistry. And it's kind of right. hard to argue right. that that's necessarily a bad thing because i've seen it argued though there's actually a movie who is that woman there's a woman who was on cheers the woman who's on cheers she was like the main woman the love interest of the guy she played a person with multiple personality disorder or disorder uh and she actually in that movie well there, there's sybil but that's not who you're thinking of that's actually um, maybe not like Mary, Mary maybe Tyler not Moore. but there was a, she, there's a woman with multiple personalities and she went to her therapist who was trying to fix her quote unquote and she said look getting rid of these personalities is like death for me you are trying to kill part of me and so she was she actually made the case she argued the case that you need to let my personalities live and help us find a way to function in society so yeah i understand your argument like the, depending on how how disruptive is it to your life is one thing but if you can fix that that, that disruption by altering your body instead of altering your brain that's less radical that would be my argument yeah this is your host dale it it's been fun guys i'll see you next week lauren will be back next week uh flaming freedom will be right back stay tuned good morning folks hopefully uh we're live right now but it's impossible to tell for sure uh, <laughs> it looks okay all right, folks, uh, some of you are watching us via Ustream. Some of you are hopefully listening to us via the Liberty Radio Network. This is your host, Dale. And Hammer. And uh, Lauren has had to go to work. This, uh, is a, this is Flaming Freedom. You can find our website at flamingfreedom.com and find out all kinds of ways to listen to us for free or watch us for free. We're also on YouTube as Flaming Freedom. Yeah, there's a little bit of a... We're, we're, we're briefly disconnected from the live show. on the That's on uh, the other end of... Uh, LRN. So sorry about that. Out of our control. We're going to talk about gender bending in tabletop RPGs. I'm curious if you had other any ex- other experiences. In my game, there's been some of that, right? And I'm part of his game. Um, yeah. I mean, as far back as I remember playing RPGs, there's always been at least one person in a group that wants to gender bend. Uh, I mean, by, play, I mean, by playing a character other than their real yeah. life gender. And yeah. normally, I mean, like traditionally when I was growing up young, uh, it would always be, a, my groups were mainly guys, uh, to be honest. So it was always a guy trying to play a girl. And I think, <laughs> I think especially when we were young, we did a really poor job of it. Yeah. Because, sure. you know, as a bunch of straight guys stand, uh, sitting around a table. Do you have like it, really stereotypical notions of women? 
or fantasized notions, maybe? I mean, would I, you say that, like... I think it was mostly fantasized notions. For some reason, they would always be the biggest slut they could be. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wonder, what What do you think is motivating that? Do you think that person is is sort of being the woman they would like to be with? Well, being the typical or gamer, I is think... is a little bit trans. Uh, being the typical gamer, I think there's part of that that just, they really want to uh, have have a woman that wants them and i think that was motivates it mostly <laughs> yeah yeah because it's yeah. not a, it it wasn't as cool to be a geek back then it is as it is now this is for sure geekdom has become a thing now um it's okay to be into rpgs it's, go, it's, it's totally okay to be into skyrim halo fallout these are like role-playing games where you're get to sort of immerse yourself in the game and be someone else. Halo less so, I'd say. That's more of a combat. Like, yeah, yeah. Halo is something you only immerse yourself in briefly. It's less immersive, I'd say, than, say, Fallout or Skyrim, where you are you have a personality that's this totally other person in this alternate universe that you get to immerse yourself into and develop a whole life, almost. You can even get married in Skyrim, right? Yeah. It's It's kind of, you know... Or Dark Souls. Which you can't get married in, but you can oh, lose okay. a lot of time in Dark Souls, <laughs> right? Um, right. Now let's um let's let, let's 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 talk about the gender bending that happened in my game recently. Okay. Right. So you guys found we're, we're going to geek out seriously, folks. If you don't, you know, just bear with us. We're both geeky. So you guys found a choker or a uh, choker necklace thing that allows someone to turn into a very specific person who has to be male. Right? Of a particular male body. And the female bard latched onto this, and no one minded. They let her have it. That lets her turn into a guy. And what was the first thing it, like she wanted to use this for? Um, well, <laughs> she wanted to have sex. Yeah. But with uh, the, or at the, the very opposite. least, have sex by herself off, yes. off in the woods. <laughs> well, then she started to wanting to have sex with, with other people. With right. It. And even pondering whether she could impregnate someone. Which was an interesting As a uh, guy. conversation. Yes. Um, yes. But if you look at... But I, who wouldn't do that? Like, honestly, if you had a ring you could put on and become the opposite gender, who yeah. would not immediately want to go and grab some dildos and toys and go into a private place and figure out what everything feels like? Uh, it's interesting. And D&D &D <laughs> definitely has a judgment about this type of stuff, but it's also always been in there. Because you've always had a cursed item that changed you the other gender ever since right. first edition. Well, is there one now, though? I, I know I don't, there was one in second edition. I don't know if there is one now. There was a girdle of opposite gender, opposite sex, or yeah, something Yeah, it, like it was originally a cursed item that you put on, and it permanently changed you until yeah. you found another one. Right, unless you which is, find, yeah, which is an interesting perspective, but I don't think... I think which have, had no effect on any kind of game mechanics. Like, yeah. you, you, you suddenly become a woman, you're still just as strong, you're still, everything is the same. Argue, it would make more sense, arguably, that something would change. Like, that kept becoming a woman. Well, you, I think something did change. In theory, you change. would be not as strong, at least. I but not stat-wise. Something did change, obviously. <laughs> obviously, something changed. But nothing that had any real impact in the game, other than from role-playing per perspective. Yeah. The idea that your character is now female. Or, and, and, and it didn't say anything about changing your sexual orientation. No. So presumably, if you're a guy, for instance, who becomes a woman, you're not a lesbian, or vice versa. But I, I just find it interesting that originally it was considered a cursed item, and now I don't know that everybody would necessarily oh, consider a, it a curse. I, I was just mentioning this in a trans forum that I frequent, that uh, there's a lot of trans people who would love to find a girdle like that. <laughs> the girdle of opposite sex, or whatever it was called. I can't remember what it was called now. Um, uh, I don't remember yeah. what it's called. Masculinity, femininity. Yeah, that's what it was. The girdle of masculinity. I don't think it femininity. existed in third edition. I think that's no. That's when they started yeah. to add the female pronouns into uh, D and D as well. So yeah, I guess they were more cons uh, more like they're being on politically that. correct. And yeah. I and, and and I kind of liked it honestly, even though you know normally I kind of poo poo political correctness, but I kind of liked that they defaulted to she and her. I it bothered me for a little while just because it was weird and different than what I was used to. But uh, and then they also made a point to like have. Almost half of the characters be female, if not, you know, roughly half the characters. If you look at, for instance, illustrations, just as example characters when they were uh, in the books, about half of them were female. Yeah, I don't think they necessarily did the best job of that, though, because they still had the, uh, 
the females were still very scantily dressed, <laughs> which obviously uh, was still the appe- uh, appeal to the male. It wasn't viewer. that bad, I don't think. Like if you look at the well, female, like monks were monks are uh, the females of a female character depicting monks. The wizard was a female character, which was an elf, a female elf, uh, and stuff like that. I'm and thinking I don't of think mainly they were the sorceress, scantily. I believe, is Maybe. the one that had like the. The cleavage. I don't remember that. I remember the sorcerer in the book was actually a male that oh, was I it? remember. And oh. he was a hot dude, too. Like the sorcerer, <laughs> he was wearing like leather, some kind of leather getup with straps and everything. I'm like, damn, this sorcerer is hot. <laughs> it, was a, it was a human male sorcerer. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, um, it was, it was kind of cool, I think. Um, speaking but, of, uh, changing genders and recently, uh, uh, things, let's, uh, Marvel has recently decided that uh, four is going to be a girl, and uh, they're they're doing other political correctness stuff. Um, also, uh, Batgirl has her costume change recently, which actually seems practical instead of oh yeah uh, spandex. It's more of a leather top with like. All right, so um, guys, be um, be patient for a moment. The actual host of Liberty Liberty Radio Network is trying to contact me. Thank you, folks, for bearing with us during some technical difficulties connecting to the Liberty Radio Network. Those have been resolved. We were just talking about, I don't know how many of you who are listening live via LRN uh, caught all of it, but we were just talking about gender bending in tabletop RPGs. And Ben and I are both in uh, some Pathfinder games, which essentially is D&D, a slight variation on it. And we were talking about experiences we've had where people either play someone that's a different gender than them or where something happens in the game that kind of messes with things. Because obviously all kinds of possibilities are there with either like a magical system or a science fiction system where someone can, uh, ha- there's more options for gender than in real life for, perhaps because like, of technology or magic. Like Neil and his uh, nanobots. Yes, Neil and his nano J. He wants like, he wants like a button he can push and then switch, but switch genitals <laughs> right um, <laughs> which will happen one day maybe maybe yeah, well, possibly you know, picture shadow run where you have like a swappable swappable uh component <laughs> snap on <laughs> a snap on <laughs> you, <laughs> i just i'm trying to picture like your crotch with like this this like um, uh, um almost like a medical metal metal canister in the spot where your genitals should be and you just like push it in and click <laughs> I mean, swap it out, push it in, click, you know? I want to be larger today. Yeah. <laughs> just right. Move that part and put a new or one on female. there. Or be female. Put female yeah. junk in there. I don't know. I would imagine that it would be female by default, and then you snap something in there to make yourself male. Right, right. So there's a new controversy. Uh, we were we, There's a... Uh, on Two and a Half Men, the whole premise of the show is that these are all straight guys. Although I'm pretty sure John Cryer is gay in real life, but whatever. Um, <laughs> he seems like it to me. <laughs> I don't think he's not out if he is, but, um, so it, it seems it's the premise is it's two straight guys raising a kid who's another guy, a, a boy, raising a boy, but they're not sexually involved or anything. They're not, it's this, they're just friends raising a kid. Now, apparently what's going to happen on the show is very controversial. They're going to get married because gay marriage is now an option. So that they can adopt this kid or, or whatever. Because apparently there's some complications and not be able to keep the kid. And they're going to they're gonna get married and I guess pretend to be gay. And that's very controversial. But Why? they're straight. They're not going to have sex. They're just going to raise a kid. And they're going to stay living together and things like that. They're roommates with a kid. How do you feel about that? What does that involve with? I mean, one, I wonder what the state checks with on that. You know, is there... Does there have to be conjugation in order for it to be considered a marriage, like in a straight marriage? I'm glad you asked that, because I'm like, why should it? Like, that's not what marriage is about. Marriage isn't about sex. I mean, how many straights, how many straight marriages have no sex? A lot of them, I'm sure. Right? I would say a lot of unhappy marriages probably <laughs> have no sex. Well, this is what bugs me, is there's this whole, the whole notion that marriage is about sex, is it, it bugs me. Because I've always felt like marriage is about choosing your family members. And what is more important, for instance, than sharing a desire to raise a kid well? Like, why should it matter if you're boffing? If you both are committed to raising a kid and raising him 
really well to be a healthy, responsible adult who's happy and well-adjusted. Isn't that enough criteria to want to be a family? I would think so. Do you so. have to boff or you're not a family? But you apparently not- a family can only be two two adults. Just make sure of that. <laughs> right, know. right, right. If there um, were three people who were devoted to raising a kid, why shouldn't they be able to get married? And they didn't want to have sex. Sex, not even a part of it. Never sh- has been a part of marriage as far as I can, I'm concerned. People only, they try to make it about that so that they can deny certain people marriages and things like that. But I feel like marriage has never really been about sex. You can have sex without marriage. Well, yeah, but I, it, the, the, the argument that I've heard and, uh, on uh, gay marriage and, and stuff like that is that marriage is about kids, which honestly it's not. But I agree. You know, I agree. It's, like, it's about being a family for whatever but that's, reason. That's the but argument that, that might I've, be the reason is to have kids. That, that's the argument I've heard why you get a tax discount of w- when you're married. Oh, okay. Because it's about like the state wants to encourage you to have kids. Right. But then it comes the question of what about the what about the families that can't have kids? There are plenty of people who get married who are sterile, who never have kids, have no desire to have kids. What if they're getting married and they have no desire to have kids? No one gets upset about that. No. Like, how dare you get married when you don't plan to have kids? Although they do still get like fifty questions of when you're having a kid. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, but, if you're but, a straight couple, anyway. Let, let's let's get down to brass tacks, folks. What is marriage all about? And, and 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 put your put your Christian Christian derp agenda aside for a moment. What is it really about? It's about being considered a family, right? And uh, when the state got involved, which is fairly recently, so, uh, you can count it in decades, not even centuries. You can count in decades when the state got involved in marriage. Why is that? Because well, the state is concerned about who your family members are. It affects things. It affects how the state interacts with you. But that's a contract that you engage in with someone for for your own reasons, whatever they are, and you want to be considered family members. It's it, it's essentially a contract that you say you were going to be there for somebody else through thick and thin. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with sex. You might have sex, but you can have sex with or without marriage. It is not about the sex. It's Christian derps making it about the sex. And there's plenty of marriages that have mistresses, as shown by tons <laughs> of TV shows that show that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, so yeah, being, being married is about being a family. Now, that might mean you want to have kids, or it might not. But uh, certainly, if, you, if, if that's a motivator for you, like the reason we're getting married is so we can raise a kid and raise the kid well and devote ourselves to raising this kid and devote ourselves to to being a support structure for each other as well while we raise this kid, then why should you have to? I, I think you should be able to go into the courthouse and say, yeah, we're straight, but we want to raise this kid, so we're getting married. We are going to commit to each other. And that's not, I don't think that's fraud. That's, there's nothing fraudulent about that. There's nothing, uh, it's unfortunate, if anything, that the court said, no, you have to be gay. Yeah, they're discriminating. At that point, the state is discriminating against you based on your sexual orientation as to which rights they allow or not. You basically have to pretend in order to uh, to to be able to raise a kid together. Should they do that? Should should you Ben, if you if you and a woman, your consenting adults want to get married? Yeah. Should you have to go and prove your heterosexuality? I don't think so, and I don't think there's actually anybody that's really. No one's got to do that. Well, but if I go to them, if I go to them as a guy with another guy, are they going to ask me if I'm actually gay? Is it any of their fracking business if I'm actually gay? If I want to marry another guy? Usually, the only time I hear about them actually checking on that stuff is for uh, immigration. Yes, yes, which also pisses me off. I'm sorry, but if I want to get married to someone who's foreign, why should that be any of your business? And again, that that gets back to though, that gets back to marriage. The reason why the state is involved in marriage is, is because it affects so many other things that the state is involved in, such as immigration status and taxes and Social Security and health benefits, especially now that Obamacare is coming into play. Yeah. The government is getting more and more involved in your health benefits. So that is affected by marriage. So the whole idea of getting the government out of marriage is so appealing to me. <laughs> I, I it's love appealing, the idea. but it doesn't seem realistic, really. <laughs> Until they get out of all those other things, I don't know how. It's not going to be a simple matter. They are involved. They've got their fingers. They're digging their fingers in in so many ways. It, Immigration, Social Security, health benefits, it, a, a ton of other things. It seems like it's almost easier to just go with the stream and just make everything marriageable. <laughs> 
at that point so yeah. that it, the government will basically be out of marriage. Right. Right. Then to try to get them the other way, try to get rid of laws. That well, the say, way to, the, 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 what we can do is, is get them to, is get them to just acknowledge all marriages. Yeah. Polyamorous included. If you have a poly marriage, again, two, two and a half men, if they want to become three and a half men, or two men, a woman, and a half man, whatever. <laughs> a half man. If they want three, if they have three people that are, like, we really want to devote ourselves to raising this kid, that would be the best kid. That kid would be so well off. They had three parents who were like, who got married just so that they could raise him. Yeah, three parents that obviously love him. Right. They love him enough to commit to each other for the purposes of raising a kid together. No sex at all. Not interested in having sex with each other. The only reason they're getting married is for the sake of the kid. How, how could you ask for more as a kid? I don't think much, you can. I, much, yeah. At least, uh, you know, with, with uh, gays marrying and uh, getting kids, they always want the kid. You know, it's yeah. like they've done a ton of work to get the kid, whereas some straight couples... I think that's couples, why. They've done studies and found straight gay, gay, gay parents have been are really good. They're exceptional. And I don't think there's anything inherent. I mean, we, we, it would be ridiculous to think that being gay made you a better parent. But the fact that it's so hard to get a, to be a parent as a gay person, all the hoops you have to jump through, you have to be really passionate to get to that point. No, no accidental gay kids. Right. The, gay kids don't have kids accident. Gay people don't have kids accidentally. We can still have kids. We just can't have them accidentally, right? And that's why they're. That's why gay parents seem so good. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think it's something else. This is your host Dale. And Hammer. Thanks for joining us, folks. Let's tune in next week, 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network and via Ustream. And check us out at flamingfreedom.com.